My thoughts have settled lately. They occur to me in clear sentences as opposed to a barrage of overlapping snippets. I can sit for hours watching the hypnotic sway of tree branches, or clouds passing by. I like myself more. Bad memories don't have the same impact. The things I said, the things I didn't say, the things I did, and things I didn't do. In these days when I no longer reach for what I don't have, you have emerged as quietly heroic. I went through your desk last week. Medals, fountain pens, old mass cards, faced with the task of deciding what to keep and what to throw out. Nobody else wanted to do it and I don't blame them. It's an impossible task. Each object, no matter how small, now elevated in status, representing as it does proof of your life. At the funeral, someone told me that in time, the good memories would surface. And they were right. I remember getting caught in the undertow, being ragdolled by the strong arm of the sea, spinning around so much I no longer knew up from down. You grabbed me and pulled me out so easily, the water only up to your waist. Every year, someone drowned on the rocks. Dragged in by a freak wave. Age 14, I drew a map of the shoreline with skulls at the dangerous spots. People still drowned. Four in one summer. All from the same family. A bell was installed next to the pay phones so it could be heard ringing throughout the village. You used to go out with the divers and look for bodies. I would wait for you on the quay long after everyone else had gone home. When a body was recovered Someone would say that you'd found it. One time, my cousin told me that you'd found a body in Black Chan. The drowned man was lying face down on the seabed at the bottom of the deep, narrow Chan. When he turned his body over, Hundreds of skinners surged from his waders, already busy stripping the flesh from his legs. I often think of the things that you saw but never spoke of. But you were never distant. Maybe it was because you saw so little of your own father. I remember you telling me you only ever saw him twice a year. But he was a sailor. He used to send home bundles of comics every few months. Dan Dare, Captain Marvel, the Human Torch. 
cowboy stories were your favourite? I have vague memories of your father. Hugging him. The faded dagger tattoo on his strong tanned forearm. The time I jumped from Nash's apple tree and knocked out my front tooth. He looked at it and said, wasn't bad. I believed him and stopped crying. Some writer once said that when your father dies, the last bulwark against death is removed. What to do in the face of death? Maybe I can convert its power into a currency and use it to charge my days with its constant thrum. As inevitable as the tide filling a darkened chant. 